Sucralophate is an anti-ulcer medication and in this video we will talk about its mechanism of action, therapeutic uses, pharmacokinetics, adverse effects, drug-to-drug -drug interactions, and contraindications. Now, so acrolophate is composed of an aluminum with the sucrose octasulfate. It is chemical structure, the same as you can see in this picture here. Now, the sucralophate is used as an anti-ulcer medication, so it is used for treatment of peptic ulcer disease, and we already know that ulcers are caused by the acid, so they are caused either by over-secretion of the acid or decrease in the mucus protecting the stomach from the acid. And we already have medications that buffer the acid, like the antacids, and we have medications that have anti-secretory effect, like the H2 blockers and the proton pump inhibitors. And interestingly enough, the sacrolophate doesn't work like any of the mentioned medications. It has a totally different mechanism for action. So it works by forming a protective coat against the acid. So this coat would protect the gastric and duodenal mucosa from pepsin, hydrochloric acid, and bile salts. And this is explained on this picture here. So on the left, you can see the ulcer without the protective coat. And on the right, you can see the ulcer with the protective coat that is formed by the sacrolophate. And this protective coat is formed when the sacrolophate binds to positively charged proteins in exotates. Now, the sacrolophate also work by increasing the mucus production, and that is by increasing the prostaglandin production. Because remember, the prostaglandin work to increase the mucus production. And once the sacrolophate work to increase the prostaglandin production, we have more mucus in the stomach. And it also increases the mucus viscosity, the sulfation, and aluminum and carbohydrate content of the mucus. And it also prevent the mucus breakdown by pepsin. And this all would lead to better mucosal protection from the acid. Now also, because the sacrolophate increases the prostaglandin production, this will lead to higher bicarbonate production by the stomach and duodenum and the bicarbonate work to neutralize the acid. And also, sacrolophate increases the binding of epidermal growth and tissue growth factors to the tissues leading to angiogenesis and better tissue repair. Now let's talk about its therapeutic uses. So the sacrolophate is FDA approved for treatment of duodenal ulcers and its efficacy for this use is comparable to the efficacy of the H2 blockers. And it is approved only for duodenal ulcers. Its use for gastric ulcers is an off-label use. So it is used off-label for gastric ulcers, dyspepsia, and it is also have the same efficacy as the H2 blockers for dyspepsia. And it is used for treatment of epithelial wounds and for this use it is used as a topical formula in treatment of ulcers including oral ulcers in Behje disease and for treatment of inflammatory dermatitis and in mucositis including chemotherapy induced mucositis and in treatment of burn wounds. Now off-label uses also include radiation proctitis by using a rectal formula of the sacrolophate and it is used for prevention of ulceration and diversion colitis by using the same formula, the rectal formula for this use 
and it is also used for prophylaxis against stress ulcers and in treatment of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, the sacrolophate is used in treatment of peptic ulcer disease not related to non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs use because the nasides lead to over-secretion of acid which is best treated with anti-secretory drugs like the proton pump inhibitors and the H2 blockers. Now regarding the pharmacokinetics, so the sacrolophate is available as oral, rectal and topical formulas and only 5% is absorbed from the oral formula and onset of action is after one hour of administration with up to six hours duration of action. And the sacrolophate is broken down into aluminum and sucrose octasulfate in the gastrointestinal tract and it is not metabolized by the kidney or the liver. And the amount absorbed is directly excreted through the kidney. Now let's talk about the adverse effects. So the most common adverse effect with sacrolophate use is constipation, which is seen in up to 10% of patients. And hyperglycemia is another adverse effect and it is seen in diabetic patients using this medication. And other adverse effects include nausea and vomiting, flatulence, headache, dry mouth, pruritus, skin rash, and formation of undigested and partially digested materials in the stomach. That is because the sacrolophate affects the pepsin action and also aluminum toxicity and hypophosphatemia because it inhibits the phosphate absorption. Now, if this medication is administered intravenously by mistake, it may lead to fatal complications such as pulmonary emboli and cerebral edema. And use of this medication in patients with renal failure may lead to aluminum toxicity because the aluminum is excreted through the kidneys and once the kidneys failed, then the aluminum would build up and it would lead to toxicity. And aluminum toxicity present with non-specific symptoms such as proximal muscle weakness, bone pain, fractures, and changes in mental state. Now let's talk about the drug interactions. So the sacrolophate, if administered at the same time with the following medications, it decreases their concentrations. Those medications include digoxin, levothyroxine, furosemide, quinolones antibiotics, oral phosphate supplements, warfarin, antivirals, bisphosphonates, and phenytoin. And there has to be a two hour gap between administration of sacrolophate and any of the mentioned medications. And antacids administered within 15 minutes of sacrolophate administration can reduce its efficacy because the sacrolophate requires acidic environment to work and the antacids work to buffer this acidic environment. Now also multivitamins can increase the serum concentration of the sacrolophate. Finally let's talk about the contraindications. So the absolute contraindications is the documented hypersensitivity reactions and the relative contraindications is uncontrolled diabetes and impaired swallowing and end stage chronic kidney disease. And with that, we reach the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please give us a like, comment your ideas and questions, and subscribe.